structures are built to protect us. They're designed to keep us safe and secure. But like people, they get old, tired and ill. They're under constant attack from wind, rain and the very ground they stand on. It's our job to keep them healthy. But all too often, they're just left to rot and die. Over the next few weeks, I'm rescuing six families whose homes and lives are literally collapsing around them. You go to bed thinking about it, you go up in the morning thinking about it. We've got major, major problems. Blows out all other plans I had. You can't fill this and fix this, it is major. From roots that threaten foundations and mould that threatens our children, to cracks so big, the house is falling into the ground. I'll be using the latest technology to uncover our property's life-threatening illnesses and revealing my tricks of the trade to give your home a clean bill of health. Get ready for the hard truths about home ownership. The Bakers moved to this quiet cul-de-sac in Brentwood, Essex, two years ago. For Claire, it was a true homecoming. I actually grew up on this road and I've always loved it. It's always just been somewhere I've had really fond memories of just feeling generally safe as a child growing up here. When this came on the market, we never thought in a million years that we'd be able to get it. With four young kids, Paul and Claire had outgrown their two-bed house and were desperate for more space. It was slightly outside of our price range, but we thought we'd be cheeky and we basically made an offer which was the maximum that we could afford and we couldn't believe our luck, you know, it was accepted. They mortgaged themselves to the hilt and bought this large five-bedroom house. It's the house that we want to see our children grow up in and hopefully maybe one day grandchildren. <laughs> we want the children to be able to have their own bedrooms. We're not overlooked at all in the garden. You've got this huge extension on the back, which we immediately just looked at each other and thought, fantastic. A year after moving in, that great buy began to seem anything but, as some serious problems began to emerge. Initially, we started to notice an awful smell every time we walked into the house. Lifting the floorboards under the downstairs loo revealed a flood of rank sewage. We had about three inches of water actually underneath the house. Next came the evil-looking black mould that started spreading across the walls and ceilings. It grows and then the children start becoming ill. And then the baker's home was invaded. We were in bed one night and hear this scurrying in the roof space above us and we were like, what is that? It turned out to be our little rodent friends, rats. Lots of them. Living with rats was horrific enough, but worse still was the fear that their house was being torn apart. Suddenly, the biggest crack you've ever seen in your life is hiding behind the wallpaper. This is beyond us now. What's going to happen next? How are we going to get through this? If we knew this is what it was going to be like, we would have run in the opposite direction. Paul and Claire have reached the end of the line. Can I help the bakers rescue their house and restore their dreams? The rear extension was a big selling point for Paul and Claire. They wanted to create a spacious family kitchen diner in here, but this plan was dramatically cut short. As soon as we started taking off the wallpaper, everything obviously had to come to a halt because that's we discovered um, a big problem. 
That's the mother and father of cracks, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, this, is, this isn't a crack, this is, this is a doorway. It's beyond polyfiller. And it's frightening yeah. to think, you know, it could be anything. But it doesn't stop there, it goes all the way along here. Yeah. And then it's cracking right the way across the slab here. But the crack also continues along here and then all the way down that corner. Effectively, the extension is falling off the back of the house. This is the concern for us as well, is suddenly going from, actually, it's just a crack, we can fill it and fix it, to being so, something major. You can't fill this and fix no. this. It is major. Mm. Right. A house splitting in two is a nightmare on its own, but Paul and Claire's problems don't stop there. They could also have a serious problem with their sewage. We came in here, and this had a flooring, like a lino flooring, and there was just gunge and black stuff all sticking under the liner and it was very wet in there. And this was when we uh, we, we cut some boards up. Um, right. And I don't know whether you can see... There's a lot of water down there, isn't yeah. there? When you get those off, you can really start to smell the... Oh, that uh... really smells, doesn't <laughs> it? Mm. If there's none of the yeah. basin, loo or shower leaking in here, yeah. you've got very serious problems yeah. with the drains. Damaged drains are unhygienic and can be horrendously complicated to fix. It wouldn't be Paul and Claire's only health hazard. The property is covered in black mould, with the worst attack in little Ellis and Fraser's bedroom. Any decoration in here has been stopped because the mould keeps, you know, wipe it down and then it keeps reappearing. It's caused by condensation, and the downside to it is it's confirmed to be linked to throat and chest <laughs> The children illnesses. have been so unwell recently. They're not sickly children, and the last year they've had every single thing that you could possibly imagine. Um, which is terrifying. It really, is. It's quite, it is frightening, and it yeah. makes you feel quite guilty, actually. With black mould and leaking sewage, the property is a bacteria breeding ground and a perfect home for one little creature. So this is your bedroom up here? Yeah, it is, yeah. This yeah. is our, okay. uh, our bedroom. Wet city. There's a little friend here that I've uh, nice. managed to find. We need to get rid of those seriously fast, and you don't want rats in a house. No. And that is the fear. If I saw one in the house, I would not be happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be living somewhere else. There are 80 million rats in the UK. They are determined to get into your home where it's warm and there's plenty to eat and drink. Their teeth are immensely strong and grow up to five inches a year. They constantly have to grind them down, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. They can gnaw through wires, brick and concrete, breaking through pipes, burrowing into foundations and climbing up cavity walls. They are also a major health hazard. They transmit a load of nasty diseases. The most lethal is leptospirosis, also known as Viles disease. It's transmitted in rat's urine and causes lung, liver and kidney failure with 74 fatal attacks last year. There are ways to protect yourself. Eliminate their food supply. Don't leave rubbish outside the bin. Cut off their water by fixing leaking pipes and seal off any entry routes into your home. With things like this, there's certain information that I have to keep from Claire. Um, and the, uh, the situation with the uh, rats getting into the cupboards downstairs, um, I haven't told her about eating did most of them. That? No, I didn't know that. See, uh, because if I did know that, I would have... Told him we've got to sell yeah. the house. <laughs> I don't so, care what state it yeah. was in, it would have to go. So how do you how do you feel about that now? Why didn't you say something? Because you freak out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Does it make you angry that that you've got all these problems with the house? It's frustrating. It's the most frustrating feeling in the world because you're working to pay the mortgage on something you can't even enjoy. It can't be easy for this family living in a house of health horrors. Leaking sewage, rats and black mould. And then there's the terrifying cracks and the fear their home is tearing apart. On top of all this, Paul and Claire's financial situation 
is also far from healthy. Six months after we bought the property, the credit crunch hit. I supplied banks with staff, which isn't the best industry to no, be in. When they're laying off more than they're taking on, it's very, very difficult. So you've got no money? No. No, no we're stuck. Many would be tempted to, to just sell it because yeah. it's such a nightmare, but you can't sell it as it is because it's probably worth less than you bought it yeah. now that you've uncovered all of these problems. Yeah. So you have to fix it, and we can achieve an awful lot. We can certainly make it a lot closer to your dream home than it is now. Yeah. Brilliant. Paul and Claire Baker bought this spacious house in Essex as the perfect family home for their four young children. Morning, mate. How are you? But in the two years since they moved in, the house has turned from dream home to danger zone. The bakers have been living with black mould, the smell of sewage, rats, and cracks at the back of the house, which look disturbingly like it's actually falling off. I don't want to have to get to the extent where we're having to move out. I want to get this sorted and I want to make it work and I want to make it our home. On a daily basis, this house feels as though it's getting sicker. Claire's at home in a property that's not up to a standard that I would be happy for her to be spending the day with the children in. It's been terrible. To get to the bottom of all these problems, I'm bringing in my team of specialists. We'll give the Baker's Home a thorough examination as step one on the road to recovery. We're starting with that number one health hazard, the rats. They've been gnawing through the kitchen cupboards. And up in Paul and Claire's bedroom, a skeleton's been found under the floorboards. I'm going upstairs to see the pest control man called Oliver. I call him the rat catcher. So what have you found? Well, this is the telltale sign of, of actual rat activity. And you can see there's actually quite a lot of droppings that are down in the, in the bottom here. So rank. So tell me, what's the next stage here? Well, we're not 100% sure as to exactly what we've got. So this is just a fluorescent tracking dust. And the idea with this is actually as they walk through it, you'd literally start seeing smudge prints on the other uh, side. OK. To find out where the rats can be getting in the house, we're literally smoking out every small opening. Oliver can then quickly seal them up. Rats only need a gap of about a centimetre, anything more than that, and they can squeeze their body down and just push their way through. So from here, a rat could quite easily chew and then push its way through, and then all of a sudden it's in the cavity of the, of the wall, and that's, I would suspect, how they first got upstairs. For Claire, sharing her home with rats has made her totally obsessed with hygiene. I just get to the stage where I think, do you know what, it doesn't matter what I do, it doesn't make any difference. Although, obviously, it's clean, it doesn't feel clean. Oliver's inspection of the garden reveals it's got all the attractions of a five-star rodent hotel. A compost tip of food, water on tap, and above all, somewhere warm and predator-free to kip. Well, that would denote a sizeable rat. To conquer their rodent attack, they need to clear up the compost and put out poison in child-safe containers. Our next priority is to find out why the house is cracking up. Cracks are appearing on a weekly basis to an extent that we've got major concerns that something serious is wrong with this property. The cost implications of that is absolutely terrifying. To find out why the extension is tearing apart, I've called in chartered structural engineer Simon Pitchers. With 30 years' experience, he knows how to read a crack. This is an important and serious crack, and we need to look further and find out why it's happened. If you have a foundation that's moving, both sides of the wall should be cracked. So you should have a crack in a similar location on the outside of this wall. The house has a large single-storey extension to the rear. Simon wants to be sure it's moving down on its foundations, so, having seen the huge crack on the inside, he's checking to see if there's one on the outside as well. Have we got a crack on the outside? Let's have a look. There it is, absolutely staring you in the face. My fingers weren't quite so fat I could get my finger into that crack. And this wall is moving this way, so you can see just there, 
the brick has moved with the wall, whereas the rest of this masonry here has stayed with the back wall of the main house. So that suggests that it's the foundation that's going. So we've got to look at that corner. To find out why the extension is sinking, we need to dig an inspection hole. How often is it that you find you can get your hand under a piece of concrete like that? No, it's not too common, really. No. The soil has definitely uh, subsided from when the concrete was originally laid. Yeah, you always expect paths to go down a bit, not so that you can get your hand right under. Interesting. Underneath the concrete patio slab, the soil has significantly dropped down. After digging down just one metre, we find further cause for serious concern. Oh, yeah. Blimey, Henry. It's weird, isn't it? It's a lot of water, considering how deep the hole is. I'm really surprised. You can see on the side here, if I just use this, that's the bottom of the brickwork, mm -hmm. that's the concrete foundation, and then we've got this, which is quite mysterious. Just poking that, that's right underneath our foundations. God, it's just so soft. Yeah, really so squidgy. So why did they stop building the foundations at that point? I can't understand it. To find the answers, we need to go deeper. Whilst the boys get digging, I've got another one of the baker's hazardous infestations to deal with. This black mould is bad news. You don't want it in the house, you don't want to live with it. It's toxic and we need to get it out and kill it. Mould is growing in the bathroom, both boys' bedrooms at the back and in Paul and Claire's attic bedroom. Every time we cleared the mould that was around the windows, uh, it would reappear within a few days. And it just seemed to be getting progressively worse. And how would you feel? Your children are unwell and uh, there's nothing you can do. Black mould is a nasty, toxic fungus. All our homes have dormant mould spores, but in damp, unventilated environments, they germinate and multiply spreading over ceilings and walls. No surface is safe from attack. Houses damaged by leaks and flooding are at risk, but the number one cause of mould is common condensation, which almost every home in the UK suffers from. Exposure to mould can cause serious lung and throat illnesses, memory loss, chronic fatigue, and the most life-threatening condition, asthma, which 2,000 people die of every year. To kill off this nasty black stuff for good, use bleach and antifungal paints. To stop it coming back, heat, insulate, and most importantly, ventilate, which you do with air bricks, fans, or quite simply by opening the windows. The baker's mould is caused by condensation. I suspect inadequate insulation is to blame. There's very little insulation all the way through this space. And when you get right down there, above your boy's bedroom, and that's one of the reasons that black mould is really having a field day. That probably explains a lot of reasons why you'd wake up each morning, there'd be water running down the walls, and also your duvet would be damp to touch. Um, right. So it's know. poor insulation. Insulating the loft and opening the windows will keep the baker's home mould-free. It's a simple solution and one of their major worries out of the way. Outside, the problem of the cracking extension is proving a lot harder to solve. We've dug down to a depth of three metres and Simon's been analysing the soil under the foundations. You can see it's exuding between my fingers. And that means it is defined in engineering terms as very soft, very soft. It's not something you would want to build a house on. I need to break this seriously alarming news to Paul and Claire. And I've laid out the soil samples from under the house to show them the evidence. The first metre or so, perhaps you might expect there to be a little bit of soil change, but what's concerning is that three metres down, you get to this, where you'd expect it to be really solid footing, and this isn't. This is like a huge, big, gungy compost heap. And the house is built on that? 
The whole house. When the house was built, it was obviously built on appropriate foundations because it's not moving. Yeah. Clearly, when the extension was built, it wasn't. So it would be sinking. Effectively, yeah. To find out that it's sinking and moving away from the house is scary. <laughs> Until we find solid ground, we won't know the true extent of the problem. But digging deeper will take a heavy boring machine, and that's a two-week wait. The bakers put all their life savings into buying what they thought would be a home for life. And with Paul's income taking a nosedive in the credit crunch, they're left seriously overstretched. I think the biggest thing is I'm working myself as hard as I can at the minute, and for something, the most expensive thing I've ever bought in my life, I'm paying for through the nose, and it's broken. We've got to fix our house, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to help me? Yeah. What are you going to do to help fix the house? Help Jesus with everything. With everything? I want to be able to sit down in that extension with the new kitchen, with the new dining room in there, looking beautiful. All the family sat around the table with it finished. That, that would make my Christmas. I wouldn't need any Christmas presents other than that. <laughs> Paul and Claire could let their heads drop, but instead they rally themselves to take care of the malignant mould in the boys' bedroom. This is like, where would it on? Be gone! Be gone, you evil black mould! You feel like you're making headway, you're getting... It's, all, it's like picking up and throwing out everything that's pissed you off over the last 18 months. Turns out Paul's a man on a mission. He can't touch the extension, but he can give the rest of the house a major facelift. There's no hiding the huge amounts of work he's taking on or the total lack of funds to bring in any help. We sat down the other day, we, we worked out we've got two weeks left of the month and we've got 40 quid left. And, you, you know, you can't... It's not possible. You can't survive on 40 quid with four children. You can't just magic money out of the sky to, to get your work finished and get it you know, to a standard that you, that you want. It's a case of big borrowing, stealing, but I'm not one for going and knocking on my parents' door and saying, you know, can you help me out? What started out as washing mould off the bedroom has turned into a full-scale replastering of the whole house. You're being a bit of a DIY hero here, aren't you? Well, trying to be, yeah. I think it's a case of... Uh, I'd much rather be paying somebody to come in and do it for me, but that's not the case, so I've got to do it myself. Nervous at all about getting it right? Terrified. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the difficulty with plastering is you need to get it mixed up on the wall and smooth within a relatively short time period. So now time is of the essence. What is it that's really driving you? Because you're very motivated with it all. I think the biggest driver is um, wanting to have a finished home for, for the kids and for Claire. But also, I'm a salesperson and I've set myself a goal. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't hit that, then I feel like I've failed. So uh, that's not something that's going to happen. With Paul focused on that goal, Claire's on rat-catching duties. Today's her first time checking the poison containers. Oh, I don't want to do this. <gasps> if anything runs out of here. <laughs> oh, God. <gasps> oh, my God, if there is a dead rat in there, I'm going to run. <gasps> oh, no, it's a slug. So I take it this must be the remnants of the other packet. So that's obviously the first lot that they've had, and they haven't come back for any more yet, so we'll keep that like that. Rats are resilient, and Claire could have to keep this up for weeks to see them off for good. Oh, that's disgusting. Paul's making a giant DIY effort. He's insulated the loft and got half the house replastered. That corner there was where the main mould was. That's where we've bleached it all and rectified the problem. And we know that, you know, that's not going to come back now. 
And so that's a big plus because now when the kids come back in here, well, Ellis is going to have this huge room all to himself, but when Ellis comes back in here, we're not going to have to worry about his health over the winter again, which is a great peace of mind. In Essex, the Baker family are going to find out if their sinking rear extension can be saved. The heavy equipment has arrived. They've always wanted a big kitchen diner here, but nasty cracks are threatening their plans for the heart of their home. We're determined to make it happen, but, you know, we didn't put thousands of pounds away in the bank thinking, oh, one day the extension might fall off the house. Our initial investigation revealed the extension is sitting on soft, boggy gunge, which is clearly not great to build on. This machine will bore down to a depth of 10 metres and tell us more about what's going on underground. Meanwhile, chartered structural engineer Simon is trying to piece together the mystery from historical maps of the area, and he's made an important discovery. I'm just looking at the 1950s Ordnance Survey map of the area, and I can see here that running right through the middle of the site is a stream. So that obviously isn't there now, but that means there must have been a valley where the extension is. His research found that in the 1960s, the valley was filled in and the house constructed on top. To keep it rock steady on the boggy soil, it was supported with deep pile foundations. But 30 years later, the extension wasn't. Had the concrete foundations which run along the back wall been sitting on a long pile or post at either end that goes further into the ground, it would be fine. That's right, the stilts just aren't or don't appear to be there. What we'd love to do, I think, is to pile it and stabilise the building. Piling requires solid ground to fix the piles into, and that's what our boring machine is now searching for. The deeper we have to go, the more expensive it will be. We've finished a borehole at six metres. Uh, we've hit firm ground. It's a firm come in stiff clay. Six metres is a long way down. For cash-strapped Paul and Claire, I fear the cost of piling to this depth will hit them very hard. The traditional way of doing that is around £20,000 to do. Is that something that you could...? That isn't any... That's just completely unreachable in terms of budget for the house. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's um, our plans for probably the next few years in terms of budget, all going on suddenly one, one item, which is a critical item to get fixed. It's, without getting that fixed, we can't continue in here. No building problem is non-overcomable, though, so always remember that. It's just a question of how and trying to do it for not too much money. Mm. Paul and Claire's only hope to find the £20,000 is their insurance company, and armed with our expert structural report, they start the ball rolling. Yeah, hi, Katie. I just wanted to know what sort of process is and how we go forward. The insurance industry receives over 40,000 claims every year for damage caused by ground movement. But less than half of them are deemed valid and will be covered. There are plenty of ground hazards that can literally bring your house crashing down. Coastal erosion is a big threat. Old mine shafts can also spell disaster when concealed tunnels collapse. But the most common risk affecting four million homes in the UK is clay soil. It shrinks and swells with changes in the weather undermining your foundations. If you are buying, do your homework. Invest in a thorough environmental and ground stability report. If you're making an insurance claim, be patient. Decisions can be slow. If you do feel tempted to pay for the repairs yourself up front, be warned, you may not be able to claim that money back. OK. Good stuff. Paul and Claire now face an agonising wait to find out if they'll be covered. In the meantime, I'm determined to sort out the final nasty health issue the family are living with. 
there's a sewage stench pervading the house, and it's coming from the pool of water under the floor of the downstairs loo. To find the cause, our team are outside investigating the drains thoroughly, using special cameras to look for damage inside the pipes. And I'm inside the bathroom, giving its plumbing an inspection of my own. So, using the boroscope camera, I can probe into the darkest recesses. Actually, you can see it dripping onto the ground. Yeah. Inside the tube that joins the loo to the waste pipe, the camera finds a problem. Basically, the seal round the main pipe where all of these three bits of the bathroom waste run in has failed. Yeah. They've just melted a plastic pipe and stuffed it into the old cast iron waste pipe, hoping it will hold, which it clearly isn't. It's just a bit of DIY plumbing that's just weeping, not surprisingly. Replacing the waste pipe is an easy fix at around £150 for parts and plumber. But it's not the only reason there's smelly water collecting under the house. Our cameras outside have found cracks in the drains. As you can see on the screen, there's fractures at that point. That's giving sharp edges. You get a large slug of sewage sitting at that point and bungs up the drain. The foul water is backing up and escaping through the cracks. Repairing them will cost three grand. For Paul and Claire, it's another blow and another case of putting in an insurance claim. Money is a huge um, stumbling block as far as all of this is concerned, purely because there isn't any. <laughs> and at every corner we turn, we're up against something else. And there are days when I just want to just jack the whole thing in and I've had enough and I could quite happily just walk away from it. But I can't. And the bakers still have another problem that is proving very difficult to deal with. So as they haven't eaten it... Oh, my God. One of the little critters that's paid the price of eating too much of my poison. The garden has become one big rat graveyard. But the poison hasn't got to them all. I was woken up at half past two in the morning by this rustling noise and there was a rat in my bedroom. And I just sat frozen, petrified in the bed, crying, saying I wanted to move and I wanted to sell the house and I never wanted to come back here ever again. With four young children in the house, the situation is intolerable. I'm sending the rat catchers back. They think the rats are coming in through the broken drains. Until these are fixed, they do have a solution to keep them out. This is a rat stop. It's a valve that goes into the sewer. It allows the flow to go through, but it stops the rats coming back. We're not taking any chances. We're laying more poisonous bait. And should the tenacious creatures get past all that, this time we're laying traps as well. Right. It's been a month since Paul and Claire submitted their insurance claim for the extension. They've now heard back and have asked to see me for some advice. What they've said is they, they're not overly concerned, they believe it's old movement, and as such, they would like to monitor it for six months. Um, How frustrating. Yeah, yeah. But actually, terribly typical of insurance companies. I personally think the evidence is suggesting it is still moving because looking at what the subsoil is and looking yeah. at the fact that it has moved in the past and nothing has been done to shore it up, mm. it would seem amazingly lucky that it's just suddenly miraculously stopped moving yeah. for some reason. They did say that we can continue with the work inside and redecorate over the cracks because while they monitor it, they will monitor it from the outside. So in one way we think, great, we can move on. And then in the back of my mind, it was, well, if I put the kitchen in and it does move again, what happens then? It's not going to move six foot. It's going to move a little bit mm. or not. If yeah. the insurance company are correct, then it won't. So I think for your own peace of mind, you can still get on with getting that room as part of the house rather than leaving it as this slightly sort of scary stick-on extension which just might float away one night when you're not looking. It's actually exciting yeah. to think that we can actually get on with it now. This is the fun part. 
I can't wait to see that kitchen go. I would rather live out of boxes now. Oh, no, I've got the wrong thing on it. Ow! Oh, I need a normal. Can I not have a normal screwdriver? What are you doing? I'm just having a look under here. Why? Because that's what men do. But you've got no reason to. Can we get these cupboards up first before you start... I just want to see where these pipes out. are coming from. Be glad to see the back of that. <laughs> Before the new kitchen is fitted, Paul and Claire need a cosmetic solution for that enormous crack. So, if there's further movement, it won't look this bad. And Simon knows just the thing. We can't be certain that this bit of the wall has stopped moving away from this bit of the wall. So, we're going to make a movement joint. We want to move this wiggly crack to a line there. And it kind of makes it more socially acceptable. Simon covers the crack with metal mesh called EML. Once this is plastered over, it'll make any future crack appear along one neat line. This mesh here, you see, it's not attached to anything on this side, but on that side, it's very firmly fixed to the wall. So, if the wall on that side of the crack starts to move that way, it's going to pull this mesh with it. And so, as it moves, the joint will open up up like that. Let the plastering commence. After a coat of plaster, the wall looks as good as new and needs just the bare minimum of maintenance in the future. If you get a small amount of movement in the wall, it'll open up a little tiny bit and you can easily just put some decorator's cork in and repaint it. Just seeing it disappear has made, made a huge difference. Finally liberated from the crack that's been haunting them for two long years, the bakers throw themselves into getting their extension finished for Paul's Christmas deadline. Hold on a second, I'm just trying to find the paperwork first. Oh, I know what goes there. You don't need to keep looking at your plans. This is going to be a test of our marriage, Mr Baker. Yeah. Paul's not stopping with the kitchen. He's got the bit between his teeth and is determined to get the whole house totally revamped. I worry he's just pushing himself too hard in his mission to give his family the perfect home. There's only a certain number of hours in the day and in the weekends, and I've been trying to do as much as possible, but coming from work, make something to eat, get the kids to bed, it's nearly 9 o'clock. There's quite a lot of pressure in that because you know you have to do it, but then physically you're thinking, I need to go to bed. Paul and Claire have had a gargantuan task getting their seriously unhealthy home on the road to recovery. Last time I was here, they were in absolute chaos, but I'm back to give the house one final health check. Back when I first saw the house, the list of illnesses was unthinkable. Sewage in the downstairs loo, evil black mould on the walls, an infestation of rats, and one of the biggest cracks I've seen. Now the entire property has been through one major health programme. If the outside is anything to go by, it's worked wonders. You wouldn't believe it's the same house. The entrance hall was a dark omen of the horrors within. And now, through Paul's mega DIY graft, it's thrown off its murky past. Upstairs in Ellis's bedroom, a huge health concern had taken hold in the shape of stubborn black mould. Now it's exactly as a boy's room should be. Bright, colourful and, above all, healthy. All of this was covered in black mould, wasn't it? All this area here. 
And I notice your window's open, they are ventilating. Permanently open. <laughs> Great. So you bleached it, heated it, insulated it, ventilated it. Yeah. yeah. So all the mould has gone from everywhere. We did everything that we were told to do and it's worked. It's worked really well. And has your kids' health been better? Yeah, absolutely. Really? It's a huge relief to know that the children can be in this room and it's not going to be detrimental to their health. Downstairs, the second health hazard was a swamp of sewage lurking under the bathroom. We rooted out some bodged plumbing, but the problem won't be completely cured until leaking drains under the house are put right. Now, we've fixed the waste pipe, but have you heard from the insurance company as to whether they're going to replace the drains? Certainly have, and we're looking in about a month's time they're going to come in and redo them all. Great! So, new drains, which will not only mean that there's no danger of the sewage leaking, mm. but the rats were coming up through the drains they as well, were, weren't yeah. they? The final hygiene horror was rats running riot. We discovered that they were coming up from the drains and we laid down traps and bucket loads of poison. So you've done everything you can to stop yeah. the rats getting in? Absolutely. There, you know, there's a lot of things that we didn't realise, but we've got rid of the compost heap. We're making sure we're aware of the habitat of where rats can go, so we're trying to make it less appealing to them. In general, do you think you've got on top of your health and hygiene issues with the house now? It's like a weight being lifted, because you're so conscious of all the different things that are going wrong in the house, and then all of a sudden they're not there anymore, and it's, mm. it's a lovely feeling, because you can enjoy your home again. There was one problem, though, that was bigger than all the others put together. A huge crack running between the main house and the extension. Now it's out of sight, if not entirely out of mind. And to think there was an absolute mother and father of cracks here, wasn't there? Mm, yeah. So this is the movement joint down here. Yeah, absolutely. And if the back of the house does move, it will force the crack to just crack down that line and move around vertically, so it'll be one small line to yeah. fill rather than cracking all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, the movement hasn't been fixed, but now you know why it's moving. It's a matter of the insurance monitoring it and eventually stabilising it, but at least you know why, and that's yeah. the key. Absolutely. Absolutely. The bakers now have the peace of mind that their extension is in the hands of the specialists and insurers. This has given them the confidence to transform it with a last-minute cash injection from Claire's parents. It's the crucial ingredient that finally makes this property what they wanted. And what this whole house was about was having this wonderful family space at the back here for you and all your kids to hang out in. And is this the vision? It is, absolutely. This is what we had in mind mm. when we bought it. Now it's actually finished, you just keep walking around thinking, oh, my goodness, this is our yeah. house. And the children love it. They've been sliding up and down the Running floor. Around, and, around. and it's really nice to see. <laughs> Paul and Claire have certainly come a long way. Having a lovely home like this seemed impossible just a few months ago, when they thought their house was falling into the ground. So it's amazing to think that last time we were out here, you were in the depths of despair, and it had reduced yeah. you to tears, the house. It's amazing. It's a complete contrast when you come out and you look into a big hole and somebody tells you that your house is moving. It's terrifying, really, really frightening, because you think, you know, there is, it's beyond us, there's nothing we can do about it. And then the more experts you get and the more opinions you hear and you realise that it's, it's not as bad as what you first thought it would be. What you've done is really brave. You've faced up to all the issues with your house, you've got on top of them, and now you're in a position of power where you, you are controlling the house and it's not controlling you. It's, it's beyond everything that I thought it was going to be. It's oh, awesome. I'll be able to come in and sit on my backside and do nothing. Yeah, we can relax for, now. For a week or two. Yeah, <laughs> till I find something else for you to do. <laughs> yeah. It's great to see the whole family enjoying their home in a way that they've never been able to before. Financially, this property is the most expensive thing Paul and Claire ever bought. And now they are finally on the path to having a secure investment. 
when I first met you, it was an unsaleable house, and you, in a way, you were kind of tied to the house because you, you didn't really want to live in it, couldn't sell it. Would you want to sell it now? Yeah, I couldn't bear to be in it one more week, and now I wouldn't sell it. No, no. no. Oh. I, I mean, want to see the children grow up yeah. in here. Do you think it works better as a house now? Yeah, I think it will like bring us together more because we didn't get like that much time to sit down because there were so many problems with the house. Oh really? Did you do you notice that your pet mum and dad were a bit stressed before? Yeah, they were. Do they seem happier? Yeah. Claire were burying their heads in the sand about the massive problems they had with this house. They've been incredibly brave, facing up to the issues, working out exactly what the problems were and working very, very hard to fix them. They've now managed to turn their home from the attacker back into the protector and ultimately that's what every home should be.